Welcome to Floating Leaf Tea Pockets. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Shouwen. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Noah. Yeah, it's a really bad way to <laughs> <laughs> to cut me off before I say my name. By the way, <laughs> okay, uh, okay. It's afternoon here in Seattle, and afternoon is always a little bit crazy here. Not necessary in the store. <laughs> Our mind oh. is like already a few hours of work. Drink one part or two parts of tea. <laughs> Had some lunch already. Deal with some internet orders and possibly emails and stuff. And and、uh, start to get a little sleepy. Oh, anxious or anxious. <laughs> <laughs> or tea high. I don't know. Mm. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> today we are going to drink our. Li Shan High Mountain Oolong, and today I pronounce my Shan quite correctly. You mean Li Shan High Mountain Oolong? Li Shan High Mountain Oolong.、Mm, I don't、mm. understand your accent. Yeah. So. Yay, Li Shan High Mountain Oolong. For those of you who learn Chinese, probably know what we are referring to. For those of you don't learn Chinese, just think we are in sand right now. It is. Afternoon in Seattle、mm-hmm. is the crazy time. Well, it is. It is a a question that I get every once in a while. When people will say, "Why do some people call it Li Shan? Is it the same as Li San?" <laughs> Shawn always calls it Li San, but you're calling it. I actually call it Li San also now because I've spent too much time here. But、uh, the San is just Taiwanese accent on the Shan, which is a Beijing accent on the San. Just different accents of Chinese. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so、um, today we are going to do a, a fun brewing session with our Li Shan High Mountain Oolong. Gao Shan Cha. Gao, Gao Shan Cha.、Mm. Okay. Stop that. And、um, <laughs> first, I'm going to start this tea in a Gai Wan. Okay. So smell the rinsing. Okay. Okay. Memorized it. Memorized it. Good. <laughs> Smells quite buttery,、mm-hmm. and lots of high notes, fragrance,、mm-hmm. citrus a little bit.、Mm-hmm. So we are going to brew、uh, this Li Shan High Mountain Oolong first in the Gai Wan, and then we'll do it again in a Yixing Clay Tea Pot. And so I will do、uh, three long infusions on each one. Sounds good. This is a new. It's kind of a new.、Uh, Style for us,、And、new style. Yeah, what do you mean? To do two teas in one episode. Well,、uh. the same tea twice, but do three long infusions. Oh to yeah, do last time comparison. we did that.、Huh? Yeah, it's、last、kind of a fun way. Last time is actually not two different brewing utensils. It's the same brewing utensil, but a tea got stored in two different places. Yes. Ah,、uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Hmm. This style of tea is the tea that made me fall in love with、uh, oolong tea.、Mm. And this style of tea, High Mountain Oolong, used to be my favorite、uh, tea from Taiwan.、Uh, I think five years straight, and I started to to get to know Dongding, and then get to know Mu Zha Tie Guan Yin, and I started to to lean towards to those uh, uh, thicker teas. I would say. Hmm. It's opening up really nicely. I haven't had this tea for quite a while. Yeah, it's been a while because I, <laughs> I usually、uh, usually drink、uh, Hawan Chan with customers. It mm-hmm. seems mm-hmm.、Um, actually coming around really nicely though.、Mm-hmm. But but so today, why do I want to do、uh, two different、uh, brewing utensils? Is not try to prove that one is better than the other. Is this Particular high mountain oolong from this season that we receive,、um, I notice a huge difference. I would say our He Huan San high mountain oolong, Ali San high mountain oolong, San Ningxi high mountain oolong. When we brew it in a Gai Wan, which I actually quite like to quite enjoy brewing 
Hai Mountain Wulong in a Gaiwan, and then I will brew uh, those Hai Mountains in a clay teapot too, just to compare the difference. And there are differences, but the difference is not that big. Mm. But this specific Li San, I feel like if I brew it in a Gaiwan, it, it tastes good, but there is a big thing missing. The liquid couldn't concentrate at all. It became too loose for my palate. And so we'll try the second infusion. I mean, the flavor is excellent. Um, on this tea, the notes are really beautiful from this uh, high mountain oolong. But the liquid from a guy one, it's very loose. Huh? Loose. Mm, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And we'll try a second long brewing from uh, the guy one. Mm. Sounds good. Long aftertaste. Mm-hmm. Mm. Second infusion, the surface smell from the tea broth is really nice. Yeah, that, that butter creaminess really shows up in the smell. But there's something missing. Yeah. In the broth. Yeah. Yeah. But aftertaste show up. Yeah, aftertaste is really nice. Just that one, two, three is missing two, which is a lot. It's called 33%. <laughs> <laughs> 33 of the, 33.333 of things are missing from a cup of tea, which is a huge percentage to me. You're saying the surface smell smells really good. Mm -hmm. The aftertaste is really good. Mm -hmm. But the texture in the mouth is lacking something. Yeah that concentration of a liquid. And it's a very interesting phenomenon I discovered, and I don't know why. The tea, this tea show up this way this year. Um, so when people place the order, uh, I normally write the personal notes to see if they have a clear teapot at home. Um, I think the tea will taste better. So I think we should put it on the website. I'll just say, Bruce and Clay. Do, do I have that written on the description? I don't know. So I rather than they receive a TM that. and then if they don't have a clay teapot, then, then what do they do? You know, the tea smells really nice. Yeah, the notes are beautiful. A little bit more mature feeling than when I first tasted the tea. Mm -hmm. So infusion feels a little bit better in the tea broth, mm -hmm. but still missing that viscosity that that buttery feeling from early sun tea however the buttery smell shows up the feeling of a buttery uh high mountain oolong shows up in, in the, the scent. cup in the yeah. scent yeah but it doesn't show up in the cup at all and that's i think that's what i'm missing quite a lot mm. from a good high mountain oolong okay so we just did three uh infusions on our Li San high mountain oolong this is part B. Oh, we forgot to do a commercial break. I thought that'd be a perfect amount of time for a commercial break. Stop interrupting me. <laughs> you totally disturb my thoughts now. If you need a clay pot for $250, go to Floating Leaves Tea's website. <laughs> a very small number of clay teapots, perfectly <laughs> chosen for the tea lover and your family. Okay, now we're back. <laughs> oh, I, oh, are you gonna leave this one on? Uh, maybe. I, <laughs> we gotta make money somehow. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't even know if we have any two hundred fifty dollars clay pots on the site. That's what I was about to ask. <laughs> Do we have any clay teapot on the website? Um, I think we. If not, I'll put one on before this comes on. <laughs> I don't know how much it costs, though. <laughs> 250 You just say that. <laughs> uh, don't listen to him. We are back from our commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, we won't have commercial break maybe like for the next 200 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we are back with a uh, clay teapot. Uh a Yixing clay teapot that my cousin gifted me, this cute teapot, very tiny cute teapot. I think it's about 100 millimeters. Um, 
many years ago. I think possibly in two thousand five or even before that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Didn't you used to do a different kind of tea in this pot? I know it's a Hainan oolong pot now. No, you it used Hainan to be oolong. a light light oolong pot. Cool. Mm. It's just like almost black inside. <laughs> Oh, then they used to brew this tea before. Mm. Uh, I mean, brew this part with that like, all sorts of teas, and never, never cleaned it, so it was like peach black, mm. like mm. this, yeah, black color in ink in all over the place in this part. So I, mm. I spent a lot of time cleaning the part one day, and then the more I clean it, the more I love it. Yeah. Okay. First infusion. Mm. Surface smell, feels. Softer, feels, yeah, yeah, feels softer, more concentrated in a way on the smell. Totally agree. Hmm. Mm. I totally see what you mean. Yeah, the liquid is also more concentrated. It feels like a high mountain oolong tea broth. Yeah, yeah. And as I mentioned earlier on, our, for example, our He Huan San, if you brew in a Gai Wan, it tastes just fine. Yeah, you brew in a in a teapot, it tastes also really good. This Lisan tea in a guy one, I don't like it. It's missing something. You're yeah, totally right. Yeah, it's missing something. Yeah. And maybe next round we can try it in a, maybe not in this episode, because I'm a little bit crazy already, uh, to actually brew it in a porcelain teapot. Oh, okay. And see if, because uh, so far I only brew it, I think only brew it in a, in a guy one. In porcelain a guy porcelain one. Porcelain guy one. Clay teapot. Hmm. And there's way more concentration yeah. show up, throat sensation show up a little bit more, body feeling show up a little bit more. Yeah. I have no idea why this tea like it this way so much more yeah. than when we brew this tea in a, in a guy one. Yeah, the difference is huge. I actually, um, you've brewed this for me in a teapot before and I thought, oh, this tastes good. Mm-hmm. But I haven't done it side by side and having that kind of comparison. Mm-hmm. There's a really big difference. Mm-hmm. Nice. And I think aftertaste also become more focused and stronger. You see, feel the aftertaste. Much more citrus notes mm. than the high mountain oolong has. Mm, mm-hmm. It show much sh- much sharper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearer. Not, not in a bad way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like an, when an image is sharper. And it does have more throat sensation. That's crazy. Yeah. I wonder why. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter why. It just matters that it happens. But Yeah, it happens. And it's good that I, I noticed this, you know. The thing is, it usually happens like this with a roasted tea, mm-hmm. right? Uh, usually a pot improves a roasted tea a, a lot. A little bit more. Yeah, yeah but, or a lot. But with a Haiman Oolong, I don't think I've ever seen this happen before. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm. So in a way, um, if you have this specific uh, Lisan tea, uh, please do use a clay teapot to brew it and see if you can notice a huge difference between these two brewing utensils. Uh, if you have other teas out there and then you have a feeling that you, you know, the tea is very good, you got it from a, a good vendor that you trust and somehow the tea doesn't show up as, as well as you like, maybe try a different uh, brewing utensil mm. and to brew the tea and see if, if there's improvement. You know, I always say give your good vendors another chance mm. don't judge a good vendor just on one tea and one experience you know if there's like if you bought 10 different teas and then all the 10 different teas doesn't taste good sure <laughs> <laughs> but if you already work with a, a certain vendor for years and then most of the time their tea is is to your expectation and to your liking and suddenly there's a tea is maybe to your point um, it's on the weaker side um you know, do it in a different way. Don't 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 judge the vendor harshly, and um, cause I bet for that many years, that specific vendor uh, is is doing great work. Be kind to your vendors. <laughs> send them birthday presents. Um, write poems for your vendors. Sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> Record no, no. an album for your vendors of love songs about their tea is so good. Are you crazy today? <laughs> it's like commercial time and it's like record songs for your vendors, <laughs> birthday cards, birthday presents, <laughs> Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the first infusion? 
that we just drank? Yeah. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. It really showed up the first time. Okay, that that's a huge difference because the first infusion in the guy one actually was showed a showed the smell, the yeah. bouquet, and then not the liquid. The liquid, yeah. the broth is very. It, it, that, that, that's a part of the liquid got taken away so yeah. much that 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 I I I I don't think it's a bad tea, but I don't think it's a, a tea that I want to yeah, drink. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like a. It's not that it's an aggressively bad tasting tea mm-hmm. by any means. It just it's lacking something, yeah. or it's it doesn't have anything special going on. Uh huh. Right. But inside the tea, somewhere there is something special. And the way to brew it out, I guess, is use a pot, mm. maybe a clay pot. I don't know. Maybe we should we should try it with a. With like our Ru Yao yeah. um, teapot. Yeah. So our brew second infusion fairly strong. Still shows concentration in the smell. Mm-hmm. Woo! You brewed it strong. Yeah, but, strong, oh. but there's a body. Yeah. Yeah. It holds up and there's mm-hmm. a... There's a... The bitterness changes to... Mm, sweet. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then the fruit, the Alisan. Uh, the li- I call it the Alisan fruit, but not pear to me. Mm. <laughs> So Li San means pear mountain, and so a lot of some people think they can t- taste pear. And I've been thinking about Asian pear and you guys pear, uh, American pear, and I couldn't taste any pear in my pear mountain tea. There is a fruit though in Li San mountain, and then when I brew this strong, it shows up really nicely. Different than Dongding's fruit. Yeah, I don't even know what kind of fruit is in. Well, I don't know what kind of fruit in, is in Li San, and I don't know what kind of fruit is in. In in Dongding, but both of them are younger fruit, not the right not the right fruit at all, not the dry fruit. Yeah, you know, sometimes we we will say Muja uh, Teguanyin is ripe fruit or dry fruit. Um, yeah, Muja has that almost like almost like dried raspberry kind of note to it. And yeah, oh and, really? <laughs> oh, cool. And compared to, I mean, it's not really a raspberry, but it has a little bit like a dark a dark fruit, like mm. you're saying. Mm-hmm. And then Anxi Teguanin has a different, almost more like, you know, people probably come after me for saying this, but maybe closer to a peach, a little bit closer to a peach. Peach, and yeah. then very close to the, the, I know sometimes it can get so nerdy, right? Really close to the pit area yeah. of peach. <laughs> yeah, because it's not a really big fruity taste in Anxi Teguanin at all. Mm. Muja has more of that kind of big fruity yeah, taste. Big fruity taste, yeah. But I guess that's how you start to identify terroir of a you know yeah. different places is mm-hmm. like those really specific kind of fruit note or whatever kind of note so second infusion really ball huh yeah but still okay yeah totally after i brew it so strong yeah and let's see the third infusion okay let's see this third infusion mm. smells sweet now yeah Oh, the flavor and the the viscosity, buttery texture combine much better together. So the tea is not loosen, so loosen up in the guy one. Because I feel like they are totally either one presence is not there or they are totally separated. Yeah. And a clay tea part somehow bind them together. The flavor and the texture bind together and make it a way more complete cup of tea mm. also after taste um la- last much much longer yeah i think one of the more interesting things you talked about was the actually the looseness the whether a tea is loose or, or concentrated in the broth and that doesn't have anything to do with the strength of the broth or how long you brew the tea how much tea you put in yeah, right yeah, yeah. I, I think that um maybe you could talk a little bit more to that as you know because concentrated maybe Sounds like, yeah, you put more tea in the pot, it'll be more concentrated. So looseness, because I do brew it in a guy one for a very long time too. And then there's not that. I feel like the monocules of a uh, texture is missing. And it, it actually tastes, it almost tastes like water with flavor. Mm. So maybe you can put some, uh, food flavoring drop into your water, there will be like, there will be like that cup of tea in a farmer guy one. And when this, the thing have a bit richness, almost like they say chicken soup. When you really cook your chicken soup well, and there's that, 
it's not heavy. Mm. Chicken soup doesn't have to be heavy. Yeah. But there's that richness in the broth. Everything has this, not just tea. Even chicken soup, there's a there can you can do it in a way that it if the 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 body of the broth yeah. feels loose and you can do it in a way that the body of the broth feels more concentrated. Uh-huh. And that's regardless of how strong you make it. It's mm-hmm. different than how many bones you put into the water before you cook it mm-hmm. or how long you cook it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that's a very interesting um, little tidbit mm. in there about how you approach your tea. Yeah. Huh. For me as a tea drinker, I pay a lot of attention on the tea broth, on the texture, on the center on the balance, on the puffiness, on the roughness of a liquid fuels in my mouth, I strongly believe this is one of the first steps that a tea maker is trying to communicate to me as a tea drinker what, he, what kind of skill he has or she has in making a tea. Because without a skill, a good liquid wouldn't show up. Mm. You know, the flavor will show up. Yeah. I mean, like all, all these farmers, this, 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 uh, let's say this community of farmers, they are making like the same style of teas. So they are going to make roughly the same, kind of the same profile of taste and smell in their teas. And of course, some of them will make something taste the taste were quite amazing and the smell is 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 more beautiful for example but but within that context a lot of taste and smell will show up kind of the same from this group of uh same neighborhood farmers right and yet one of the cup is gonna jump up to a tea drinker because the liquid is so exquisite Mm. and i think they take a lot of uh uh, they take more skills than than just put a f- to pull out the, the the specific flavor from this region, and when they have a way to make it combine together and make the liquid, uh, for example, puff a little bit more, and there's something so interesting to me that I started to look at its shape mm. in my mouth. Sometimes I start to look at where it can actually spray. Uh, and then if it's strong, does it have a good center, mm. et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so concentration and looseness is also within the context of structure that I look at in a, in a broth. And I always like to start people from there. Um, I call it, I, 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 I totally invented this. Okay. I don't think it's a true tea knowledge or whatever. I call it the tea broth texture that you can identify is a foundation of a tea. Mm. Yeah. And without the foundation, the tea is really boring to me that a tea can taste so empty sometimes. Like you drink a cup of tea and then you quickly swallow it. I mean, not quickly, you swallow it <laughs> and then you just forget. There's like no memory of that tea because the, the structure doesn't show up. Mm. Therefore, there's no first step of memory at all in the mouth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Wow. Mm. <laughs> well, maybe think about um, when you're making like a tomato sauce, mm. you take two different, maybe like a, just a plain tomato sauce that has tomatoes and olive oil and garlic mm. as your one kind that's really mm-hmm. simple. And then you could have your another kind that's maybe like a puttanesca that has tomatoes and anchovies and olives and mm. capers and all this other kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so one is definitely more complex in the kind of ingredients that you put in. Correct. You could use the exact same kind of ingredients. Mm-hmm. But if you take someone that has a lot of skill, mm-hmm. they can take both the complex one and the simple one and make something that all the ingredients combine together. Together. To make something that feels... They work together. Yeah. Because you can taste three things in one mouth and then the three things don't work together. Yes. And you can taste three things in one mouth and you feel like, wow, who thought of this and who cooked this? Yeah. To be able to make it feel so good and taste so good that everything about it make a lot of sense. And the analogy to tea 
you could use the exact exact same ingredients. So you take mm-hmm. farmers that are using the exact same thing, which is tea leaves, mm-hmm. and one makes something that's pretty good, and one makes something that's really exquisite. Mm-hmm. And the notes, like you say, may be totally either similar or the same. Mm-hmm. Like you could say, like whatever you know, talk about all the notes that you can identify, and they actually come out to be roughly the same list of notes. Mm-hmm. The profile is the mm-hmm. same. But one just has that extra, the puffiness in the mouth expands in a certain way that's mm-hmm. just like, oh my, God, that's so, something inspiring about it, even though it's so mm-hmm. simple in a way. Mm-hmm. And also I would like, because we are talking about texture, uh, I would say if, if like, see if, if a tea is balanced and you for sure can feel that. Yeah. You know, can feel if uh, a liquid feels balanced in your mouth to you because sometimes a tea liquid is not balanced or even you can taste it's not clean Mm. and so some one of so that means part of the process is not deal with correctly or the tea has a lot of pesticide for example that's one thing that you can you can think about what does so what does it mean by feeling clean Hey, you know what? We soak tea leaf in, in, in clean water. Mm-hmm. Hopefully you, you guys all get clean water <laughs> to brew your tea, right? And the base of water that you can find. So why does some tea taste clean and what, why, why, why do some tea taste not clean? And so always, you know, when a tea hit your mouth, feel and think a little bit. But feeling is the most important thing. Feel it. And you guys are very capable of doing this because, hey, you know what? We eat and drink every single day. Mm-hmm. We sometimes just not, oh, oh, I should know this. Sometimes you think, oh, tea, tea have to become an, we have to be an ex- expert to, to be able to taste tea. Uh, no. If you know how to drink <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know how to eat, you apply it to tea. You are, uh, you are very into coffee. By all means, apply your coffee technique, tasting technique into your tea. If you like red wine, use that too. You know, you can, and you like to eat really good food. For sure, use that mm. <laughs> into your tea. Look at, look at how a liquid feels in the mouth. Uh, I will say tea sometimes is, it's, it's, um, require a little bit more concentration to our mind concentration to do that because I, I do feel some of the teas is one of the lightest beverages besides water mm. <laughs> <laughs> that, that people are obsessed about, right? You, people can be obsessed about all sorts of alcoholic, alcoholic beverages. Even if you are obsessed about juice, it's still a bigger thing than tea. Tea is one of the lightest beverages, that people obsess about. Yeah. So maybe it takes just that much more just quietness. Just takes a little bit more quietness yeah. to, to, in a way I like to say, I feel and I watch mm. the, the tea liquid, how it play out in my mouth and really try to, to, to have, uh, to build a, a ability and, and sensibility with it. And if you feel like this is a, uh, this is a subject like, what the heck are you talking about <laughs> now? <laughs> Uh, feel free to reach out to us. I don't mind to talk to you over the phone. That might be a bit easier. Uh, the best way is we see you in person mm. and you will know what I'm talking about. We can brew tea. Yeah, together. we can brew tea for you. And tea is best this way. But since we're in a, a global community, I, I love so many of you guys out there, but I never met you guys. I never meet you guys. And this is one way that I get to communicate with you is, is through internet, mm. through podcasts and through live sessions. And yet none of these can compare to you sitting in front of me and drinking tea with me. Mm. So someday we hope that can happen. Mm. <laughs> um, but meanwhile, since they can happen that easily, then we use this way to communicate what is really exciting and what we really care about tea. And use, like you were saying before, use your experience of what you already know tastes good. And it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be, if you 
if you say, oh, use your experience with food, it doesn't have to be you go and eat fine food at a no, no, fancy no. restaurant. Yeah. If you just know, oh. Eat above noodles. No, no, no. My, my, <laughs> my grandma made the best whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. I really like my grandma's roast chicken. And, yeah. And you have that memory in your head of why it, just not even why it tasted so good, the fact that it tasted so good. Mm -hmm. Just apply that, that, oh, she, she did it so perfectly. And it, it's like the same thing that everyone puts on their roast chicken, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, whatever kind of memory or, or, or experience that you have, you can u use that and apply it to your tea experience. Mm. Oh, so we don't know when we are going to actually publish this episode. And, but anyway, in our Seattle time, next week is Thanksgiving. Oh. So eat a lot of good food. <laughs> oh, I bet this, I bet this one can come out on Thanksgiving. Okay, cool. Or after Thanksgiving by a little bit. Yeah, either before or a little bit after. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, I hope um, you guys will be eating or have eaten <laughs> a lot of delicious food. Oh, try Oriental Beauty with your Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, don't do Gaba Oolong. And if it's too late, sorry about that. Seriously, sorry about that. It'll be too relaxing with with turkey yes, and, fall asleep. and fall asleep a second time with Gaba Oolong. Oh, or uh, Red not, Peony. Not, not Oriental Beauty. Red Peony. Yeah, red yeah. Peony will perk you up, will make you kind of go wire a little bit. And then you have energy to uh, deal with your friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> and, and anyway, be safe out there. Enjoy your time and whatever you are drinking that day, it's going to be good. Mm. You know, have a good time either alone or with your like ones. <laughs> 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 thank you for listening and thank, uh, happy pre or after Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on where we load it and when we load it, I mean, and, um, uh, Enjoy a good cup of tea when you, if the thing is not really your way, just sit down 10 minutes. And if you say, I don't have time, I'm going to smack your head. Yes, you do have time. <laughs> <laughs> you have time and sit down, have a pile of tea. Everything is going to be much better after that or during it. Mm. Happy tea drinking. Mm. We'll see you. And I mean, I will talk to you next Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and... Yeah, that's it. That's it. Cool. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>